and welcome back. I'm going to show you some exciting new updates to the AI tool Brisk. So if you have been on my channel before, you've heard me talk about Brisk. I love it. It's an amazing AI tool that's a Chrome extension. So it works really seamlessly in your browser from working in Google, Google Docs to Google Slides and now Google Forms to create quizzes. So it has gotten several new features and updates. If you've used the tool before, it kind of got uh, an overhaul in the way it looks. They have a new logo and type of colors and branding, but they also added in new features and they're always looking for more. So they do have a paid version of it, but if you haven't used the extension and you install it, you do get access to the paid version for 14 days and then you get bumped down to free, but you can still do a lot with the free version. And I'm gonna show you some of the awesome features within that today. So really it shows a nice breakdown on their website on what you get with paid versus free. They do have a variety of plans from school to just individual teacher plans as well. So the cool feature about Brisk is that it works in Chrome and Google productivity tools really easily. So one of the features that I love that's available in the free version is that you can create an article, a text, a reading just from scratch here. So if I click the create button, I'm in a Google doc already. I've pinned the extension and it just kind of pops up. I'm gonna move my screen there so you can see this a little bit easier. And here are some of the different examples that I can do. So. Lots of different options here, and there's things in here for that are more than just uh, content focus. So some of these are ones that are more for administrators. So emails, newsletters, letters of recommendation. These intervention pieces, I will say that these are under Brisk Premium. Um, so if you do want to get access to it, you do have to schedule a call, and it tells you that. But the free version, you get access to all these different things up here that don't have the little lock button beside them. So if I wanted to make a lesson plan, a decodable text, translation, a resource, I could easily do that. All right, I can select standards. I'm gonna make this seventh grade. This is a standard I actually used to teach. Um, right, and then brisket. Right. I always like that it says brisket because it makes me think of the food. <laughs> All right. So it goes, it goes, it goes. And then it does give you some nice AI tips while it loads. Just tells you just some things to be mindful of, which I really like that it has some tips there for teachers and just some ways to approach those conversations with your students. Something that they're going to be adding in over the next few weeks is the ability for students to use Brisk. So it's a slightly different type of tool, but it's more student facing. So allowing students to use this to have a chat bot, to have some writing support and coaching while they work through some different things and the ability for them to translate it and level the text themselves should they need it. And if you're curious about that, their blog, their social media outlets are really good places to get that information as well as doing their certification program too. So if I want this to be edited, I could certainly go through and change it. If I want to make more resources from this, I can, less detail, make it longer, do whatever. So that's one really cool thing in Brisk is that you can use it to make lesson resources, a vocab list. All right. And if I wanted to add it to the stock, I could. Otherwise, I could do a Google form. So it's going to make vocab list here and some questions for my students. So the quiz questions and form questions are something that's fairly new for a while. That was only available on Brisk Premium, but now they've made it available to everyone, which is pretty cool. All right. So if at any point in time, I want to change something here, or create more, I can. So some of the other cool new features that I wanted to show you are the ability to create other types of resources, not just a document like this. If I wanted to make DOK questions, I could, but I'm gonna actually have it make a presentation. You can select how you want this to look here. There's not a ton, but there's some. So I'm gonna pick this fresh one. Images are only available in that version. So that's a little bit of a bummer. And I gotta go back. All right. So you do to give it permission the first few times you go through. 
and then it makes them. So while it's working and thinking, it's gonna make those slides for me. And while it's making those slides, I'm gonna pop over here into a different tab and show you some other features in Brisk. So in addition to being something that you can use as a teacher to create learning resources, you can also use Brisk to evaluate student work as well. So I can change the reading level of something if I already have it made or I'm you know, working on a resource that I've made for students. It can inspect writing and detect AI, but just know that any AI detection tool is not 100% accurate. So I really don't recommend using those. You don't want it to say it was all AI detected. You go to the student and then the student didn't use AI. It's just, it gets some false positives on um, those tools do. So the other one is just giving feedback. So what's really cool is that there's cool features in here that are free. So you can use Glow and Grow. So it looks at this and says, what are some things you want the students to look at? You can even upload a rubric if you have one, which I love. And it just speeds up that feedback in the writing process. So I talked with a teacher who used this pretty often. And what she does is she has students who are actively writing essays. She uses this to give them some ongoing feedback. And it's not the end all be all feedback, but it gives her the chance to have a quick pass at it. Look at what Brisk pulled out and then have those conferences and then the students work through it. And then she ultimately grades and does feedback on her own in the final product. But this is a way to scaffold that writing process and to give students more feedback along the way. So if you want to insert this in the student work, you could. If you like all of this, you can always go through and edit some of it. But I'll do insert and then it puts it as comments out to the side. So that stands out to students. It's super easy for them to see. Pretty amazing. Adds it all in. All right. And then it puts it here in a table at the top. So it really catches the students. I. And what's neat is that you can also use this feedback piece now in other Google productivity tools. It used to only be in docs, but now you can do it in slides as well. So here are the slides that Burst created for me. So, you know, it needs some pictures. It needs some more fun and flair, but it is a resource that is pretty cool and is already all set to go. If I wanted to make a quiz off of this, I certainly could. And I could do this in Google Forms. And I'll do Brisket. So here's the cool feature with creating quizzes in Brisk. You can certainly just keep them at their own. Otherwise, it makes it in Google Form and it puts it in quiz mode. So it will be self-grading. So just another way to save yourself some time. These are just some of the new features in Brisk. They're constantly adding more. I hope that you have time to check out this tool and let me know what you think.